everyone, welcome to podcast one of Dr. Wright Breaks It Down for You. My name is Jessica, and I'm here with my dad, Dr. Wright. He's an inventor, but he's also a chemistry teacher, so I thought it'd be fun to put together a podcast where me and my dad try to explain phenomena in the world and how science is behind it. I guess really more my dad explaining it, and me just kind of <laughs> listening and asking for the questions. So one of my dad's inventions is the Storm All-Weather Safety Whistle. And it's pretty cool because it not only is the loudest uh, mouth-blown whistle on the market, but it also works underwater. So that, I guess, that would be kind of a good first podcast is asking you how the whistle works underwater, why you want to be heard underwater, and all of that. Oh, great. Hi, Jessica. You know, I invented the underwater whistle many years ago when I was actually 14 years old. And the reason why I wanted to invent the whistle was because my buddies and I were playing Marco Polo. That's the game when you're young. Marco Polo, Marco. And and everybody gets all mad at you for making so much noise at the pool or the beach or whatever. And so we thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun if I had a whistle that worked underwater? That way it wouldn't bug anybody, but we could still play the game. So I thought of the idea of, of making an underwater whistle. And before I start to explain exactly how my whistle works, let me explain a little bit about sound. Because sound is really, really cool. And sound underwater is particularly interesting. A sound is simply the vibrations of molecules bouncing around on the eardrum. Mm-hmm. No different than, let's say, uh, Keith Moon from The Who hitting his drumstick, um, whacking away on the eardrum. Now, the eardrum is a piece of skin about the size of a, a pencil eraser. And for sound to travel and to make this noise, it's got to vibrate. And one molecule hits another molecule, and they shake. And it's kind of like a domino effect. And when you drop a plate across the room, the air molecules will bounce around until it hits your eardrum. In air, the transfer of the sound is pretty inefficient because the air molecules are so far apart. And the sound doesn't travel that far and doesn't travel that fast. But underwater, molecules of water are so close together, the water just sends sound really efficiently and really fast and really strong. And the sound travels actually four times faster underwater than it does in air. I remember one time I was scuba diving, and I heard a boat motor start. I very carefully went to the surface to see where it was, very carefully. And it was a quarter mile away. The sound really travels great underwater. It's because of the fact that the molecules are so close together. It's interesting because I would think that it'd be much more difficult to hear sound in the water. Because everything sounds kind of muffled, you know, and it's difficult to, like, yell, you know, communicate in the water. I think it's a little bit like if you were to whisper a secret to a, a really big crowd of people. And the, that vibration, that secret, spreads out in every direction. And in water, it spreads out in every direction really fast. It bounces off the bottom. It actually even bounces off the top of the water. And so the sound does get a little muffled. And oh. also, you have to understand, in your ear, the water goes in your ear. But the water doesn't go all the way against your eardrum. It goes kind of pretty far in your ear. But then it stops, and there's a little pocket of air there. And that's part of the reason for the echoing or the muffling of the sound. Oh. So here I am as a kid, and I, I want to build this whistle to work underwater. So what I did is I got hold of an old sports whistle and started really looking at how it works. I mean, taking my time and really looking at it. And I came to realize the whistle works by air being forced by a sharp blade into a little tight air chamber. Now, this little air chamber actually spins and vibrates the sound. But the sound is not made inside the whistle. The sound is made just above the opening in the whistle. It's no different than the teapot. The whistle from a teapot, it doesn't come from the inside of the teapot. It doesn't come from way up in the steam, but it comes from just above the force on the teapot. And this little area, about the size of a peanut m and is really where all the sound is made. I figured if I could find a way to put a little chamber or a little box that protects that little area, I could make a whistle that works underwater. So I took my sister, Claire's toy. Remember, I took her toys when I was a kid, and I kind of broke them apart a little bit. And she's still mad at me for that, by the way. Anyway, I took these little pieces of, of plastic, and I made a box right where that little area is. And I used the parts of this box to build a chamber so that when you took the whistle and blew the whistle, the whistle would blow the water out of that little box and protect the kind of the birthplace of the sound. You know, the first time I wasn't sure whether it was really going to work at all. What I found was, was when I took that whistle, put it underwater, blew the first little part of air, 
emptied the chamber out, and the rest, well, it blew beautifully. And it worked, just like you're blowing the whistle above the air, but now you're underwater. Now, I've changed the whistle since then to make it better and to amplify the sound better. But that's basically how I thought about it. It sounds kind of like a tweet underwater, but it goes forever and ever and ever. And so it's kind of cool. Do you think it's because you developed it for underwater? Is that why it's the loudest whistle in the world? You know, I really, you know, that's an excellent point. Because when I first made the whistle, I just wanted to work underwater. And in order to do that, it had to be a pretty strong whistle. I wasn't thinking how strong it would be. But I just wanted to build it so that it was powerful enough to shake the water molecules. What I didn't realize is what I was actually building was the loudest whistle in the world. I must admit, it was by accident that I did it so loud. I was just trying to make a really strong whistle. I didn't know it was going to be that strong. Well, it sounds like one of those good problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, it's been used now by police and search and rescue teams and women's groups, and uh, it's really pretty cool. Well, thanks so much, Dad, for okay. sharing that story. So I guess this concludes our first podcast. All right. Well, thank you all so much for listening, and uh, see you next week.